I, I think that there's just a knowing in your spirit, like, you know, when you're being selfish or when you're taking pride in something. I, I think the times where I've known it's right are the times where I've realized that I had absolutely nothing to do with the success of whatever it is I'm involved with. There's a lot of podcasts out there, but this one, you never know what to expect. It's always fun. Feel all the emotions with your host, Mercedes Rich, and every surprise guest. Now it's time. And the artist is... Hey, it's Colton Dixon. Why did you get into music? And is that the reason that you're still in music or has it changed over the years? Great question. The initial reason I got into music, I just, uh, I grew up in church and I just love music. I love that later in life, I realized that music is the only universal language that we have. You can hear a piece of music and be moved by it regardless of what language that you speak. And I think that's just really powerful. But I just loved and gravitated toward music since I was young and started taking piano lessons and kind of honing in on, on that and then started singing when I was like 12 or 13. And and that was really whenever I felt called to music. I believe that, that God kind of put that, that dream in my heart, and, and He has continued to open door after door after door and has created opportunities that have blown my mind. But still here, still doing it for the same reason, actually, and that's to reach people and to let them know that they're loved and to give them hope. And what might be interesting with my quote-unquote mission versus maybe other Christian artists is I think all people need hope and all people need love, um, not just church people. So I really try hard to write not just for the church, but for people who maybe don't believe in God and don't realize that they need Him, because whether they realize it or not, they do. So yeah, um, same reason that I felt called when I was young is the same reason I do it now. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you talked about how you want to reach more than just Christians. You want to reach those that haven't heard the gospel as well. So with that, have you ever thought that you weren't living authentically within the calling that God presented you within music? 100%. I would be a liar if I I said no. (laughs) You know, it's interesting. Being a believer, we're called to serve, right? Jesus served others, and He lived as our greatest example, and He had a servant's heart. And whenever you do what we do, when you walk on stage and people cheer for you when you show up to work, things get backwards really quick. Mm. And you start to believe what people say about you, both good and bad. You put too much of your identity in what others say about you. And, you know, I even, I I had a post on Instagram a while back kind of about this, like we even show up to churches to play a show and and they obviously don't mean any harm by this. They're just, they're serving as well, but they're they're catering to you all day long. They make sure your favorite foods are in your green room and and that you have a home cooked meal for lunch and dinner and, and maybe even a pizza for after show food. And, you know, you just, uh, you can get used to that lifestyle, but it's a real wake-up call when I get home, right, um, mm-hmm. to my wife and my twin girls. And it's like, oh, man, I've, I've been so used to being catered to. I need to switch that off, and I need to—now it's my job. Like, I'm, I'm a dad, right, and I'm a husband, and I need to take out the trash, and I need to help with the dishes and the bottles. And, you know, so I don't think that we were designed as humans to, to be served. I think that we were designed to serve. And whenever that switched for me— and I started showing up to, to work, to shows, knowing that I was there to serve the people in the audience. It just, things clicked, and it made a lot more sense. Mm. And what about times that you have felt authentic? You know, how do you tell the difference between the two? Oh, that is a great question. I think, I, I think that there's just a knowing in your spirit, like, you know, when you're being selfish or when you're taking pride in something. I, I think the times where I've known it's right are the times where I've realized that I had absolutely nothing to do with the success of whatever it is I'm involved with. Prime example is my last song that we put to radio is a song called Build a Boat. And it, it's been like the biggest song I've ever had in my career. And I don't say that to take credit for it. Mm-hmm. There's no, there's not necessarily like a, there's no formula for if you're a songwriter or wanting to be an artist. I hate to tell you, there's not a formula. It, it was actually the most unconventional songwriting process I've ever been a part of. But I just, I felt, I felt in my spirit that it was a message that needed to be heard. And I'll be honest with you, I, I wasn't even like thrilled with the way it turned out. Like I would have done some things differently. I would have, I would have recut like some instruments. Like I just would have changed some things. But what I love about God is is that when we come and we're available and we're expectant, He does what He does best, regardless of what it is that we put forth. It could be the best thing we've ever done or whatever. Like, we just we just have to come and be ready, and then He'll take that. So I just think that's a prime example of God did something amazing with the little that I have. But those are the times. 
it's like, man, I, I had nothing to do with that. So it just has to be God. And that's more often than not in my life. Well, and it's so interesting that, you know, in that example that you said it was unconventional from the start and God can really use the unconventional. No kidding. He's he's the best at it. Like you take David and Goliath or was it Peter who wasn't like very eloquent with words, <laughs> who like wound up speaking the most, you know, out of the disciples. He's always in the business of taking the weak and making them strong. And man, I'm living testament to that. But yeah, this song... It actually was already written before we had even heard it. Um, it, didn't, it wasn't uh, the same message. It was a, a mainstream song that some guys in Sweden had started. And we heard it and heard the potential, but it kind of turned into this back and forth of the guys in Sweden, you know, not really wanting us to change the lyric, but we're okay if we use the song as it was. But us knowing, it's like, man, like we have an opportunity to tell a story of overcoming, a story of faith uh, and perseverance and through the eyes of Noah, like we have that opportunity, but finally it got worked out. And, and again, that was, that was from a nudge from the Holy Spirit, like just like it was done, like we weren't going to be able to use the song. And I just felt deep down that I needed to type out an email saying thank you for the opportunity to wish them well, um, saying that I was a big fan of the song and can't wait to hear it once it's out. And then it wasn't a few days later that they hit us back and said they had changed their minds. And that's another example of, man, I, I know I was the one writing the email, but I wasn't the one that changed their heart. I believe that's what God does. Mm. So it's really cool. Very unconventional. I don't recommend <laughs> <laughs> I don't recommend writing songs that way. Um, <laughs> but hey, you never know. And um, I just know that it was right. It's the right song, the right timing, and really thankful for it. Well, and it seems different for you and me because that's not the way things are done. But for God, it was just totally totally normal. Totally. And that's another theme in the Bible. The way you think something like ought to be done is rarely how it's done. Like it's a very backwards way of doing things, but that's just the kingdom mindset. It's pretty backwards and upside <laughs> down, but I'm, I'm learning more and more about that every day. God shows me things. I'm like, well, I would not have done it that way, but somehow it's turned out better for me. So you know, however that works, thank you. And I'll just continue to try to be obedient and to do what you say to do. And we can see that God has worked through that song, probably because that's not exactly what you thought would happen. And it's turned into this song that I've heard so many stories and listeners of people who have just been like, this song is exactly what I needed to hear. Uh, See, that is like the, that's the coolest thing, like above any award, above anything like that. Like that is like the gold to me is when I get to hear people's stories, whether in person at a show or, you know, through you guys, the radio listeners, because we don't always get to hear those things on this side of heaven, right? Like, I think when we get to heaven, it's just going to be nonstop. Like, man, like, you may not have realized it, but when you ordered a coffee from me that one day and you just asked me how my day was going, it was like the final seed that brought me to Jesus. Like, we don't, we don't think that way. Mm. But, Uh, Yeah, I just I think it's awesome that God uses songs and people like me and really honored. So I think that's the coolest. Definitely. Music just it really has a way of speaking to people that nothing else does. Yes. Agreed. So going back a little bit to the living authentically, um, there's that phrase out there, fake it until you make it. So when you hear that phrase, what do you think? Um, I used to do it. (laughs) Um, I used to think that was that was life's motto, you know, and and in some in some aspect, like it's good. God's word says put on the full armor of God. That means that we aren't currently carrying it. It's something that you have to do. Like there's an action required. So but fake it till you make it has a negative connotation. I think that as believers, we get to fight from victory, from a place of victory instead of fighting to victory. So yeah, I just realized I had it backwards is all that I didn't really have to fake anything that I could be authentically me as long as I was living in, you know, perseverance of who God wanted me to be and who is who he has called me to be, then authentic Colton was the best way to, to be. Yeah. So. Why do you think we as humans so desperately try to fake it, you know, act perfect? It's because we care too much what other people think. And again, that's uh, the unhealthy side of us also cares way too much what other people think. That's something that I have to, you know, push aside often is not doing things for the sake of impressing other people, but doing things because I know I'm called to do them or just doing them to the best of my ability to please God, which is ultimately what it should be. Take this record, for example. There's been so much time, so much time and effort put into these collection of songs 
Um, it's just because we're trying to make them as good as we possibly can make them because we want everything that we do to glorify God. But what you can get caught up in is like, hey, like, so for the cover, like, I don't know, this one kind of says what needs to be, you know, does what it needs to do, but this one looks way cooler. And I think, you know, I think my peers would think this is cooler. It's like, that's ah, the wrong way to go. Mm-hmm. So I've just kind of learned instead of believing what other people think, I think my dad said this. He said, don't believe the hype, good or bad. Um, and it's just so good. Like, just do what you know to do and what you're called to do. And don't worry about what anyone else says. Hmm. And sometimes that's... That was very long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're fine. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 you're good. And I think it's really easy to say sometimes, but also a lot harder to live out. Oh, 100%. Yeah, it's it's super easy talking about it right now with you. But yeah, when, uh, <laughs> when rubber meets the road, it's like, hmm... <laughs> Also, when rubber yeah. meets the road, I've never heard that phrase before. You're welcome. I'm from the South, so <laughs> it's a pretty common one down here. <laughs> I'm from Kansas, so I feel like I'm kind of out of the loop on a lot of things. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a, that's a mild one. We'll see if I can pull out another one. <laughs> uh, is there like a specific moment in your life that you can think of that you knew that you were pretending, but you didn't want to admit it to yourself or to God for that matter? Ooh, um... There is. Let me think. Let me think of one. I know there is. There are many to choose from. <laughs> this is kind of an example. And I, again, more so, I don't know that it necessarily falls in pretending, just realizing that my focus wasn't in the right place. Just off the hills of uh, American Idol, which I did, you know, 10 plus years ago, we put out my first record and I was up for New Artist of the Year at the Dove Awards and actually won Contemporary Rock, um, like Pop Rock Dove Award that year, which is so cool. But we got to perform at the Doves as well. It was my first time there. Growing up, I always wanted to do Christian music. So even just to be there was a big deal. We sang, uh, or we did a song called Never Gone for my first record. And I started out in the audience on a piano with a microphone. And my band was behind like a curtain or like a, a big thing that was going to raise mm. kind of halfway through the song to reveal the band. Well, I start the song and they had forgotten to turn my microphone on. So it was like super awkward and whatever. And I was so angry. Like I didn't necessarily say or do anything that would have been obvious, but internally I was just fuming. Like I was so, I was embarrassed because I was in front of my peers and that, but then I, I just kind of realized man, like, even though this moment isn't ideal, like, I feel like life is about how we respond. Like, our response is everything. Mm. Um, We can choose to be offended. We could choose to let shame or fear in, whatever. So it was in that moment that I kind of went, why am I doing what I'm doing? No, it's not ideal. Little setback, but it's fine. We started the song over. We did it again. It was fine. Uh, It's like, ah, like, when things don't go our way, are we going to let those things steer us off course or is it just going to be a little speed bump and we're going to keep going? So that was a moment for me where I'm like, yeah, I just, I just had to, had to learn that. And, and it was even backstage, like my band and even um, my wife was just kind of like, you know, talking me off a ledge, like, it's okay. It was great. You know, <laughs> <laughs> thankful for those guys, but yeah. That was a moment for sure. Yeah. How do you combat those thoughts when they start to come up now that you have gone through that and you've learned that lesson? How do you start to like realize that you're in that mindset and get out of it? Yeah. So I, I believe that those thoughts um, have an author and that author is the enemy, mm. right? That author is the devil. And um, God says, I've come to give you life and life more abundant, but the enemy comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. So anytime thoughts come in our brain or in our mind that, that don't line up with the Word of God, it's the enemy, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So you just have to realize that. And once you do, once you realize that there are two categories, you can start to place thoughts in those categories. And whatever doesn't line up, you just dismiss and um, you focus on the good things. And for anyone that's listening or anyone that's gone through this, what advice would you give just on the subject as a whole, living authentically and all of that? Yeah, man, we live in a culture that, yeah, it's all about like even just social media, like you're putting your best face forward and uh, not saying that that's always a bad thing, but when that's all you see, you start comparing. And I think that, I think Teddy Roosevelt said comparison is the number one thief of joy. So honestly, like living authentically to me is living a joyful life. It's knowing who you are in the Lord and living out of that place, knowing that 
You are chosen. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. We are kings and queens in his eyes, right? We are, this sounds so cheesy, but having twin daughters, like we are princes and princesses. Like he's the king, like we're his kids. So if we saw ourselves that way and just lived out of that, lived out of that confidence, not arrogance, but confidence, then I think we would live happier, more joyful lives. And we wouldn't care what other people thought or said about us. So my practical advice would be limit the time that you spend on social media and increase the time that you spend in God's Word. Hmm. Yeah, and you mentioned that it was cheesy talking about your daughters and princesses and princes, but honestly, like, it's not. <laughs> like, Audio Adrenaline said it really well in the song Kings and Queens. Like, we are yes, the daughters of the true k- king. Like, we really are. Yes, we are. How can I and anyone listening also pray for you in this season of life, pray for your family and your band, everyone around you? Yeah, man, for this tour coming up, just pray for the right people to be there. You know, I think we're actually going to be kind of close to you guys, like maybe 15, 20 minutes away. You're going to be right here in town. like. (laughs) Yeah, like real close. But we just, we're just believing for the right people to be there. And it's not even about ticket sales or anything like that. We just, we believe that God has given us something to say. And we believe that the songs that, I mean, this is, it hasn't been just like a couple weeks of preparation. It's been like 10 years have gone into this moment. So I just believe it's going to be really powerful and I believe God's going to show up and really cool things are going to happen. And I just don't want people to miss it. This should have been there. So just believing for the right people to be there. And then also just for my family, Um, my family is like the number one thing. My wife is Wonder Woman, just a superhero holding down the fort Mm -hmm. while, you know, I'm off on the road. She's so patient and understanding. And, but also for us, as we navigate what work road life balance looks like, you know, we, we look at people like, like Toby Mac, who's just an amazing businessman, but also an amazing family man. And, and who seems to balance it really well. And, and even like Matthew West, or, I mean, I could name so many. So I try and learn from those guys when I'm around them, but we're, uh, we're trying to be led and to do what we feel called to do. And we just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing always. So pray for them as I'm on the road and that we would know, because every time I say yes to something, I'm saying no to other things. And that's kind of a tough pill to swallow, but it's true. So trying to navigate that. Yeah, absolutely. Is it okay if I pray with, pray over you real quick? Yes, come on. Dear Heavenly Father, just thank you for this conversation today. Thank you for the ability for Colton to open his heart and talk about this subject, about living authentically for you, Lord, because that's what we're called to do. We're called to live for you, and living fake doesn't align with that. Lord, I pray over this tour that the right people show up to the concerts, to the shows, and that you are present in every single moment of every show, before the show, after the shows, on the flights or the drive time, that you are there, Lord. I pray that you're present in the life of Colton's family as well, and that you just have your hand and peace over their lives as they're navigating this new situation of of shows and being on the road. Lord, I just pray that they all know that you are in control and you are over them all in all of this, Lord. Amen. Amen. Mercedes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. This has been awesome.